Good evening. Welcome to the curriculum subcommittee meeting of the Brockton Public Schools, December 8th, 2020. Before we start the agenda for the evening, uh, I need to read this into the record. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to that, that order, public bodies are no or public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirement that meetings be held in public places, open and physically accessible to the public, so long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberations through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access. Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube, and Comcast Channel 12. The public can also access this meeting via the following link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right, before we review the agenda for the evening, I'll call the roll to establish a quorum. Mayor Sullivan. Here. All right, D'Agostino, I am here. Um, Ms. Asak. Here. Mrs. Mendez. Here. Mr. Minicello. Yes, here. Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Here. All right, we have a quorum. So, Mind me, I'll get my paperwork together any minute now. Yeah, there we go. I knew I had it. All right. So we only have two items on the agenda for this curriculum meeting. Um, the first one, presentation of school-based strategic improvement plans from the Dr. William H. Arnon Elementary and the Mary E. Baker Elementary. And then finally, any other business that a member of the committee chooses to bring before the curriculum subcommittee. Uh, Superintendent Thomas, if you want to start things off. Thank you, Mr. Yagasino. So I want to um, welcome um, Principal Gra McGrath and her team. And then um, um, we have Principal uh, Val Brower here and her team. I believe the unknown is first. I'll have June set the table, but I want to thank um, you all for being here. I want to thank your hard work uh, that goes into uh, the sustainability plans. Um, we know it's a ton of work. Uh, that you do with your team, your teachers, uh, and then the staff from Central. Again, we really appreciate it and we look forward to your presentations. Thank you. June? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, so over the last few weeks of curriculum subcommittee meetings, you've continued to hear about the sustainable improvement plans uh, that the schools have been not only submitted, but have also been approved by the state. And so as I continue to repeat, I know I sound like a broken record, but I hope what continues to be clear is how much the schools share a common thread, while at the same time that you hear the highlights of the individual characteristics that make each school so unique. And so tonight you're gonna to hear from the Arnone and the Baker, as the superintendent said, and I trust you'll see those patterns emerging. Um, as I know you all remember, Princess, pr Principal, Princess, Principal McGrath, <laughs> yes, uh, led a successful collaborative effort of school improvement at the Raymond School and is now in her second year working collaboratively with the Arnone staff. I see her leadership team is here with her tonight. And by all accounts, um, they are making some great strides towards school improvement. And so with that, I'm going to turn it over to Carol, Principal McGrath and her team. All right, thank you, June. And thank you for calling me a princess. I'm gonna to have to go home and make sure my husband continues that. I'll so, remind him for you. <laughs> right. Good evening, Mayor Sullivan, Superintendent Thomas, members of the school committee, and of course, members of our studio audience. It's a pleasure to be here tonight to share with you the Arnone School Sustainable Improvement Plan. Joining me tonight that I would also like to introduce to you are the members of the Arnone School Instructional Leadership Team. So just give a wave. We have our assistant principal, Nicole Ford. Hello. We have our instructional STEM coach, Jenna Gianaros. Thank you, Jenna. And Carrie Pearson is our instructional literacy coach. 
All right, so they are here tonight with us. So while I am starting to share my screen, I'm going to, oh, wait a minute. I'm going to share a fun fact with you all. I started my teaching career at the Arnold School as a fifth grade teacher 25 years ago. So to be back here, it's pretty special. All right, so now I'm messing up. So let me just. But, um, Principal oh, McGrath, it, it, was a, it was a different unknown school then, right? Well, actually, I was at both. So well, come on now, it's 25 years. So I started at the, up the, up the street there, Warren Ave, the old uh, the Pete school is. Just and then we moved down. We, we actually, I was part of the transition team to the new building. I and remember I just that. I want to say, Superintendent, I was also on that team at what we right. like to refer to as the real Arnon. I'm just kidding, Arnon people. Okay, so you know what? I have to share another fun fact. Guess who, uh, I mean, guess who I taught with? I taught with some of the Brockton Public School administrators, June Saba, Diane Lynch, Heather Ronan, Michelle Nezrella. We were all teachers together at the same time at the Arnon School. So I always felt like I was in great company. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just going to move this a little bit so I can see. Can everyone see that screen? Excellent. All right. So before I share our plan, our plan, I want to review with you the steps that we took to create our sustainable improvement plan. The Iron Owen School is in its fifth year of turnaround work. And this plan, the steps involved in creating this plan uh, involve working alongside two key people that I would like to give a shout out to right now. They are our district liaison, Dr. Julie Andrade, coordinator of elementary literacy, pre-K to five and social studies K to five. So thank you, Julie, for all of your help. And also I'd like to give a shout out, I believe she's watching this on YouTube, to Cassell Walker, our DESE liaison from the office of the statewide system of support. So we worked with Julie and Cassell throughout each school year. And most re recently we worked together on a renewal and reflection process, which ultimately led to the current our known plan. This process included reviewing all available assessment data to help us identify what strategies and initiatives of our plan were working and were successful and that we would like to continue to implement, implement and then also which strategies and initiatives were not as successful and that we would not be continuing to implement. And that led us to revise and modify our strategies and initiatives along with setting of goals and creating strategic objectives and we also created a timeline to be used to keep us on track as for the implementation and monitoring and the progress we were making towards reaching the goals of the plan. To help support that turnaround, our turnaround work, the Arnon was also awarded a target assistant grant again this year. And this funding allows us the luxury of providing important professional learning opportunities to our staff. Opportunities like having a staff book club this past summer we had over 25 our known teachers participate in high expectations book study. And Mrs. Ford is in the midst of getting another book group started on, and I'll talk about that a little later. So the, this funding has been crucial in helping us lead this work. The last couple of summers, we've had summer institutes that have you know two full days of training. I look forward to um, having some Saturday work, maybe having some teachers work together on Saturdays to continue this work. I know I might be the only one that's excited about that, but for right now, <laughs> that's the plan. That's what we're using our funding. So I'd like to now share our sustainable improvement plan, and I will focus on the strategies that we feel are somewhat unique to the unknown and that we feel have the most impact on building teacher capacity, which we know will ultimately lead to student success. So let's begin with our turnaround practice one. And this is leadership, shared responsibility and teacher collaboration. The strategic objective is the school has established a community of practice through leadership, shared responsibility for all staff and professional collaboration. And the initiative that we have put into place to meet this goal is that of our focus groups. So the initiative we put, so the, there are three subcommittees that make up our focus groups. The three focus groups are instruction, culture, 
and structure. And we feel that these three areas take into consideration and encompass every aspect of a school, running of a school. So instruction obviously deals with curriculum and instruction. Culture deals with the climate of the building, taking into account the social emotional behaviors of both staff and students. And the structure group deals with the logistics of the building, scheduling, procedures, protocols, things of that nature. And I have to say that having staff work together in these focus groups was a structure that we had put into place over at the Raymond when we started our turnaround work there. And I got to see firsthand how powerful this, these groups were. Setting these structures, having these in place and providing staff with the time to meet in these groups. It goes so far to increase staff members' sense of empowerment and voice. And when they are actively involved in the decision-making process, they plan to have more buy-in. So also um, in these groups, they work in vertical teams, meaning that there's grade level representation in each and every group and allowing the staff, well not allowing, but giving them the opportunity to work with different grade level staff members and um, staff from different content area, that it just, it improves the, um, the dialogue. And you know, some of the, it can lead to powerful dialogue within these groups. Ideally, these groups meet monthly to identify building initiatives for discussion and problem solving. But with remote learning, we have shifted the topic of the focus of these groups to that of student engagement. Our groups met two weeks ago and each group had great discussions and sharing of ideas and practices that they are currently implementing to increase student achievement. Next up, we have turnaround practice two. And this is instructional practices for improving instruction. The strategic objective for this turnaround practice is that school the school employs intentional practices for improving student specific and student responsive, I'm sorry, teacher specific and student responsive instruction. And as you'll see, we have many initiatives here at the Arno that, that are in place for improving instruction. But for the sake of time tonight, we have chosen three of these initiatives to share with you. The first practice that we are so proud of here at the Arnone is that of our data dashboards. We use grade level meeting and common planning time to analyze student data and create data cards for each individual student here at the school. Formative assessment data like star testing scores or unit benchmark scores are recorded onto each student's data card. The cards are then sorted and placed in pocket charts and displayed on the walls of our meeting room. Having this data sorted and displayed by classrooms and by grade levels gives us a quick visual of how individual students, certain classes, and even how grade levels are doing. Take, taking the time to update these cards after further assessments are completed, again, gives us a quick visual of student progress. We can quickly see the trends or identify students that are not making the progress that we would like to see. And just what happens when we do identify these students will be discussed in more detail in turnaround practice number three. The next initiative that we have in place to increase teacher capacity and strengthen classroom instruction is referred to as learning walks. Learning walks were created before my time here, but I have found them to be quite successful. And I'm happy to share that other schools in the district have taken our model and adapted it and are using it in their own buildings. So these walks involve identifying staff that are successfully implementing the strategies and initiatives of our turnaround work. These teachers are then asked to open up their classroom to their peers to come in and observe these best practices in action. The learning walks start with a pre-brief meeting with the teacher who we say is being walked on, the one that's inviting the, um, their peers in and the staff that will be visiting the classroom. We all meet beforehand to, rever to review the learning walks protocol we have and discuss what the focus of the observation will be. The classroom teacher will always share their plan for the lesson just to kind of set the stage for the classroom visit. The team will spend brief, uh, brief 20 minutes or so in the classroom, and then we will all regroup and do debrief to share about our observations and come up with any questions we have. And then, of course, it ends with a follow up to next steps, 
what strategies did the teachers see themselves that they could bring back to their class and implement? And what supports might they, might they need from us to see this happen? An effective component and one we did not originally have was that after this shared discussion, we now invite the classroom teacher in to join us. And that way, any questions that are raised, the classroom teacher can immediately clarify or answer these questions. And then of course, kudos to, can be given to this deserving teacher that we walked all over. Another area of work that, the, that each school in Brockton is engaged in is that of the equity and diversity trainings. As you know, the district has provided excellent professional learning opportunities for all staff last year and continue to provide us with these trainings this year. We at the Arnone are mindful and strive to continue to weave the learnings that we took away from these district training, trainings on equity, diversity, and inclusion. And we look to weave these into our classroom instruction. Mrs. Ford, as I said earlier, is starting up our second staff book study group with the book, The Culturally Responsive Teaching and the Brain. And I believe she has close to 15 staff members already signed up, so that'll be starting soon. We have purchased a book for every single staff member here at the Iron Own School. And the plan is we'll start with this book group, we'll do a train the trainer model. And hopefully every single staff member, all 97 of them will have completed this training in some way, shape or form. Our staff also continues to use the diversity, equity and inclusion checklist while creating lessons. Again, making sure to be mindful of this important work. All right, turnaround practice number three. It's all about student specific supports and interventions. The strategic objective of this turnaround practice is the school is able to provide student specific supports and interventions informed by data or student specific needs. I'm sorry, that was, I, <laughs> I'm reading my, student specific supports and interventions informed by data or student specific needs. As I referred to earlier, through analyzing and recording of the assessment data onto our data dashboards, we, along with the teachers, are able to quickly identify students that are not making progress and who may need additional academic supports. These supports are then scheduled. Sorry. No one's here to kick me to say, click it. These supports are then scheduled to be administered during what we are all calling the what I need now blocks or the win block for short. As you know, re the remote learning schedule has a block of time each day specifically devoted to providing students with the extra supports that they may need. This block is scheduled outside of the core academic time. And what we find so helpful is while students are getting the extra support services that they need, but they are not missing out on valuable classroom instruction in the areas of reading math or science. During these wind blocks, we might have our English language learners having their ESL instruction, or some of our special education um, students might be pulled for their moderate special needs by the moderate special needs teacher for their services. So again, this wind block has been great in making sure that the students do not miss out on critical classroom instruction. Now the structure we have in place to assist us in identifying students that may need extra support is our instructional support team meetings or IST for short. This team is made up of the instructional leadership team and our moderate special needs teachers. When teachers have concerns about a student, they simply fill out a form requesting an IST meeting. The IST meeting will then meet with the teacher and discuss teacher concerns, review assessment data, and have a conversation and decide on just what type of extra support or intervention the student will need. We then set a goal and that's based on the need of the student. And then the student is provided with either a classroom intervention, which is provided by the classroom teacher or the child may be placed in an intervention group where targeted instruction is delivered by one of our Title I staff or one of our instructional leadership coaches. Progress monitoring takes place weekly to ensure that the targeted instruction is effective. And a follow-up IST meeting is scheduled for usually five to six weeks where we meet again to track the progress of that student. Turnaround practice number four is all about school culture and climate with the strategic objective being 
the school is a safe, orderly, and respectful environment for students and is a collegial and collaborative culture among teachers. So I'm just gonna take a drink. Thank you. The strategies we are using and the initiatives we are implementing to provide, to provide social emotional sports, supports to our students and staff are many, as you can see, and you can't see. I'm the only one that can see, here we go. But this list is long, but for the interest in time, I will share just a few of the things that we are doing at the Arnone School to promote and support our students and staff social emotional welfare. We all know providing students with a safe and supportive learning environment is crucial for their academic success. Now more than ever, we have to make sure we are providing supports for the emotional well being of all of our students and that of our staff members as well. Something that we do here at the Arno and every day that we have found to be impactful is quite impactful is hold daily morning meetings. Students need to be recognized and made to be feel part of our school community. This feeling of belonging goes a long way to increase in student engagement. One component of morning meeting is that all teachers implement is the greeting. Each child is greeted by their classmates, sometimes in a fun and game-like manner. Maybe they say hello to each other in a different language. I know that when we are here in the school, the classroom teachers have the students sitting in a circle where everyone can see each other and they have them do, maybe they'll do, the greeting might be a fist pump, fist bump, and they'll pass that along saying good morning to each and every one in the circle. And so even though our morning meetings look a little different now, teachers are still taking the time to acknowledge each and every student and ensuring that their day starts off in a positive way. Another initiative we have that we're working to, on to increase student engagement and promote, the, promote um, their positive like self-awareness and positive feelings about themselves, positive behaviors, that we've, treat, we've tweaked our PBIS-inspired initiative of earning Tiger Paws. While we're in school, students could earn Tiger Paws for walking down the hallway quietly or getting caught being kind. But as we are in the remote learning mode, we have shifted the focus and now students are rewarded Tiger Paws for logging into class on time, staying focused, returning from lunch, that's a big one for us, or it's the specialist class returning on time. So the teachers award the students Tiger Paws and then keep these tickets with them. And then at the end of the week, Mrs. Ford and I hold Tiger Paw Pull Day. We each join classrooms and we ask teachers to stop teaching and to hold a drawing. Teacher holds up the bucket that contains all of the Tiger Paws that week and pulls out a winning ticket. Students then join Mrs. Ford or I in a breakout room. We show them the picture of all the wonderful prizes. You can see it there that we have. And then we tell them how they can have a parent or family adult come to the school and claim the prize. One more shout out. Um, it, I have to acknowledge our school nurses, Tracy Politano and Casey Dimitri continue to go above and beyond coming up with fun and engaging activities for our staff and students to participate in. Some things to boost morale here in the building. We held a not so social ice cream social. We had a Zoom bingo game with prizes. We have upcoming paint night. We have also um, the instructional leadership team has been busy helping to keep staff morale, staff morale high. They come up with a tasty treat cart that they made classroom deliveries, snack deliveries. And we have come up with a schedule for guest readers. Teachers get to take a 15 minute break away from their computer screen while a guest reader does a read aloud with the class. And those have become quite popular. Our parent engagement specialists, Mrs. Gianaros and Mrs. Wedge have done a great job organizing two different book giveaway events. Students got to come during the grab and go meal pickup time and pick out a new or gently used book. Also going back to Tracy and Casey, they also had a donation drive here at the school and we had teachers donate board games. And then the week of Thanksgiving, we gave our board games during the grab and go meal pickup time. And so every family, if they came, had an opportunity to get a new board game and to play together with their family over the holiday break. 
as you can see, the Arnon staff are all working together to provide for the academic and social emotional needs of our students, families, and of our staff. So I have come to the end of my presentation. All the members of our instructional leadership are here tonight to help answer any questions you may have. Thank you, everybody. I will stop sharing. There you go. All right. Um, I see. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for being here tonight and, and for the great job you did on the presentation. Um, we really appreciate it and, and we recognize um, you know, the hard work that is going into these turnaround plans and the implementation. And, um, you know, so we, we, you know, we do appreciate, um, you know, all the work that uh, that's going into this and that your, your staff is doing. And please make sure you relay our, you know, appreciation to them because I know they're all working very hard to, uh, you know, uh, do what's best for the kids. So. All right. Um, thank you. I will. All right. Uh, I saw a hand from Mr. Sullivan. The floor is yours. Yes. Thank you, Mrs. McGrath. It was a great presentation in PowerPoint. No, thank you, you really outdid yourself. <laughs> <clears throat> Your improvement plan seems to be working. Thank you to all. Thank you and to all your staff for a job well done. Outstanding. Plus, you have great goals. And good luck with the Saturday workshops. Thank you. I might be alone, but we're going to try it. All right. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> well, and, and I apologize, Tim. We both messed up. It's it's Princess McGrath. I mean, yeah, oh, there you go. Okay, we can't forget that. I'm never, they, you know, my instructional leadership team is not going to let me live this down. Thank <laughs> you very much. <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure w w when you get your Saturdays going, uh, they're probably not going to refer to you as Princess on Saturday. But... Oh, I can definitely <laughs> bet money on that. You're right. <laughs> All right, uh, Mr. Minicello was next. The floor is yours, Mr. Minicello. Hi, good evening, um, Principal McGrath. Good to see you. Um, Hi, so good to see you, Tom. Um, uh, Mrs. Minnie's listening too, and she thinks that you're great. Oh, she's, big, you know, Hi, she's a big fan of yours. <laughs> um, excellent. I have to agree with Mr. Sullivan. Excellent presentation. Um, and when you when you were focusing in um, on the portion about the. Uh, student assessment and ind individualized sort of customization. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, when the kids are pulled out to, to focus on their individual needs. Yes. Um, I mean, that really, I think is, is the key to this whole, whole thing because uh, like we were saying before, we have so many kids with so many different needs, especially, you know, the English language learner population. So mm -hmm. um, I guess what I, what I wanna say is that I totally support uh, your plan uh, to me, the faster you can identify and look at your student population and your student body, and, and just even to make some generalizations, you know, groupings of cohorts, you know, we have students of this category and that quarter category to try to organize and provide them with the supports, even in small groups because of, you know, certain segments uh, or, or commonalities, you know, to, to present a plan or curriculum to a number of students from the same background or the same, you know, places, so to speak. Um, you know, we were talking earlier about uh, policy and, um, um, you know, we really need to provide you with, with the curriculum supports that you're going to need to, to, to hit upon and really be effective with, um, you know, that customization, you know, that uh, individualized uh, support for these these kids. So, so to me, the sooner you can identify the needs, and, and perhaps organizing it in in groups, you know, to, to really hit 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 um, you know, hit the ground running. Mm -hmm. I, I think the quicker the success uh, and um, you know, quicker the positive results, um, you know, will, will occur. Um, and, and 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 I'm sure Ethan's listening and Superintendent Thomas. And we have to make sure we have the the, the tools. You know, based on you know a twenty five percent to thirty percent um, English language population. I mean, so so I assume a, a large number of students at the R known are, are going to be in that category, correct? You're right. Yes. So so, right. so so how you deliver, how you deliver, and what what methods you deliver with, and 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 you know, that's going to be critical. I th I think you know I, you know totally again, agree. Totally. A non educator just sort of mm -hmm. observing. Um, and, um, and getting back to the unknown, 
wasn't Miss Nezzarella part of that team and our good friend, God bless her, o O'Malley? Yes, you're yes. right. Did All I right. did I skip Michelle Nezrella? I apologize. Yes, oh, she did. was a sixth oh, oh, grade oh, teacher. Oh, okay. All right, Mrs. Minnie was paying more attention. Yeah, oh, she, okay. you heard Miss Nezrella, but but yeah, but um, yeah, great presentation. You, you've got a great team of people there. Um, thank you, so, Tom. Uh, thank you. You know, I wish you all the success. But you know, the faster you can identify the needs in these kids and get get that support. And, and, and the materials and tools you guys need to, to give that effective yes. support is going to be is going to be key and and we have to figure out you know a way to pay for it but you guys have to tell us you know what you need to be successful you know what I mean because you are on the yes. front line you know and and you've done this before Carol so I have all this uh, all the confidence in you and, and in your team you know so you've got great leadership at the Arno so all right thank you so, okay we'll be going out for a pizza soon okay sounds good Okay, bye. Bye. Uh, thank you, Tom. And and I, I agree with Mr. Minichello's point and, and would want to, you know, reiterate that if there is, you know, something you need from us in, in order to support the work and effort that, that you and your team are doing, um, please let us know and, you know, we'll do the best we can with the, what we've got to work with. Um, thank you. We appreciate hearing that. But we know the Office of Teaching and Learning is a great support to us. And Karen, we call her Auntie Karen from Title I. And she supports, she funds a lot of our intervention materials that we need. So we're very thankful for that. All right. Um, Mrs. Sullivan, I think I saw a hand up from you. Hi, good evening. Um, Hi, I just, how are you? I just wanted to thank um, Principal McGrath and her team for the great presentation. And I just wanted to point out a couple of things that I thought were really great. Um, while she was presenting, she had like a little picture in the corner that said team together. Everyone achieves more. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Yes. And she, the staff book club with the high expectations teaching that, you know, John Safier did mm -hmm. um, his presentation and we're trying to implement that with yes. the teachers and the students. Mm -hmm. And um, I love the data cards for each student, which yes. I know that would point out the kids that needed help right away is great idea. And the learning walks that the teachers come into each other's room and then share back. Yes. Really great, great job. Well, thank um, you, thank you. Also the great social emotional supports that you had there. Well, I really liked those. So great job, thank you. Thank you, Judy, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, thank you very much, Mrs. Sullivan. Any other member of the committee? Um, any other comment from the superintendent or any of our guests that are with us before we move on? Move on. No, just thank you, Principal McGrath and your team. We appreciate the presentation. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right. Well, thank you, Princess and Company, for. <laughs> I had to one more time. Sorry. Thank you, Mr. <laughs> you know, Thank you all it. very much for, for joining us and for the work you put into the presentation, but most importantly, for all the work you're putting in, you know, with the kids. So thank you. All right. Next, uh, we uh, are going to be hearing from the Mary E. Baker School. And uh, so I don't know if the, if the superintendent, if you wanted to. Um, and we have Principal Brower here with their team and we look forward to their presentation. Again, we thank you and your your staff, um, the team from Central and the support from Desti. We really appreciate your hard work because we know how much work goes into these sustainability plans, uh, not only the plans, but the work that goes into what teachers do every day with students. So thank you Sarah, so much for being with us and we look forward to your presentation. Good evening, everyone. Superintendent Thomas and school committee members and um, E-team and everyone else that's here. It's nice to see everybody tonight. Um, Princess um, McGrath is a tough act to follow, but I'll see what I can do. Um, I didn't plan to open with a fun fact, but as she had several, I um, tried to think of a fun fact and there are many fun facts about me. Um, so I'm going to use, I'm gonna give you a fun fact that has been on my mind this week, but it's about my daughter. Um, I just did the math and it was 33 years ago in 1989, I'm sorry, 1988, I started my first year teaching at the Hancock School and my daughter, 
is now, this is her third year, but she started three years ago, her first year teaching at the Hancock School. So that's just something that, fun fact that I'm extremely proud of. So that's my sharing for tonight. Um, as far as my team, well, my they're currently known as my bubble. They were formerly known as my team, but my um, leadership team, I would like to introduce. George Donovan is my assistant principal. Jane Werb is my STEM coach. And Michelle Morrissey-Smith is my literacy coach. And I, I could not function day to day without them. Okay, now I will attempt to share my screen. It's like a magic trick. <laughs> did I mess it up, Jane? You did a great job. Okay. I'm sorry, bear with me. I usually have Jane literally sitting right next to me to make sure that I don't have any problems with my technical devices. Doing fine. Don't worry. <laughs> so uh, we're very happy to share with you some of the work that we've been doing at the Baker School. We're extremely proud of all of the work that we've done and we love any opportunity to be able to share with you and with the community and with anyone else. So um, thank you for allowing us this time. The Mary E. Baker was established in 2008. Our school is home to 668 students and growing quite a few new students this week, in fact, in 36 classrooms, grades kindergarten through grade five, including eight substantially separate special education classrooms and three sheltered English immersion classrooms. The school's demographics represent a diverse population. I'm gonna jump right into the performance history as measured by the state assessments, looking at the Baker School. So if you can, you can see looking at the chart here. That we have a pot that starting in the beginning, 2012, 2013, the Baker School started in the first percentile. Couldn't go any lower than that. But if you look at the screen, you can see that each year we moved up and continuously improved. We're extremely proud of the work and the efforts that were done each year so that eventually through 2014, 15, 16, and then finally up until 2018, 19, we hit the 12th percentile. As I'm sure you know, when you're below the 10th percentile, you have some involvement with the state as far as a um, a turnaround team coming and working with you in your school. So the Baker School has had a long history of involvement with working with the state and partners to help us get to where we are today, the 12th percentile. And we're, like I said, extremely proud of that. The next slide I'm going to highlight some of the demographics in our school. And you can see one thing that I've highlighted is the students with disabilities. We have 21.4%, so almost a quarter of the Baker School are students with disabilities, as compared to the district, which is 16.6, .6, and the state, 18.8. .8. So you can see that's something that makes the Baker a, a bit unique. This is a breakdown of what the school looks like. I like to show this because it really does tell the story of the Baker School. We think of the Baker School as a place where everyone fits in. There's something for everyone. The Baker School has most the most substantially separate classrooms for the elementary schools in the district. We have two life skills classrooms, kindergarten age. We have city resource, an entire strand, a K-1, a grade two, a three to five. We have a specific learning, dis learning disabilities classroom. And we have two autism spectrum disorder classrooms, grades three to one to two and three to five. And they make up a huge part of our school. And we're extremely happy to have them with us 
if you look over to the right, the MCAS, the breakdown of the classrooms as far as MCAS is listed here. Most of our students take the MCAS. They do not take the um, portfolio assessments. In years past, they have, but currently we have only a few, a few students out of all of these students taking a portfolio assessment. So most of our children engage in the regular MCAS assessments. Now, with all the positive news that I've been able to share, I wanted to share with you some specifics on our students with disabilities, because what ended up happening was as our entire school moved forward, and we did, a, like I said, did a lot of work and brought everyone along, something was happening that we did not realize with our students with disabilities. They started out in the ninth percentile, jumped up at one point to the 17th, then to the seventh, and then last year down to the fourth percentile. And as you know, when you fall below the 10th percentile, that's when you're looked at and you need to start working on a plan. We had been working on a plan at the Baker School since 2012, but what we realized was as we were moving forward, we were unintentionally leaving this population behind a bit. And so as we moved forward this year, Actually, let me go back to the timeline a little bit. In two, prior to 2017, the Baker School Think Tank engaged and developed a plan and goals to move the Baker forward. So before I came to the Baker School in 2016, I was at the Brookfield School and we had done work with turnaround there as well. So I came to the Baker with some um, a, a, a lens from another school, but the Baker School had been working for many years with um, a state partner and partners from the central office on developing a plan. They had named it the think tank. They had done a lot of work and were making progress as you saw on the slide before. In 2017, in response to our percentile rating for all students on the MCAS being below 10%, we established what was then called a turnaround team. At that time, the school underwent the full process of writing a turnaround plan. The plan focused on the needs of the entire student population and it resulted in improvement in student performance. In the next years, 2019, the Baker School scored in the 12th percentile for general education students, which was wonderful news for us. We were very excited, but fell below the 10th percentile for students with disabilities. And the Baker School was identified by DESE, the DESE accountability system for a low performance for students with disabilities. So while we were um, on one hand rejoicing and very happy with our progress, we realized that there was some work that we needed to do with not only continue to do with the entire school, but to focus on the population, the students with disabilities. In January of 2020, the Baker formed a redesign team, which was, which was created, which we created to create high leverage, high leverage goals and strategic objectives for our students with disabilities in each of the four turnaround practices and initiatives. I was going to talk a little bit about the four turnaround practices, but um, Principal McGrath did a really good job and went into a lot of detail about each of the practices. So I think that you understand when I refer to the practices, um, what the four of them are. So moving into today, where are we now? The redesign team meets regularly and is building on the work of the turnaround team. To build on our successes, we reviewed the objectives and initiatives from our turnaround plan and revisited several to specifically address the needs of our students with disabilities. So as we move forward, it makes sense to build on our successes in the years of hard work and the efforts okay. that, we, that we have all done together. The binders that you see here, I put some pictures and they certainly don't tell the story at all, but each one of these binders is just completely chock full of the sequence of, um, events, if you will, from 2016 until now. The binders are, they're a tiny representation of the countless hours spent in grade level meetings, staff meetings, PLT meetings, committee meetings, and all of the time that the staff has spent unpacking the four turnaround practices. 
we've had in this time period, two monitor site visits resulting in two instructional observation reports, staff, students, and parent surveys. Some of these have been, they've been extremely in, informative. Um, they've been difficult at times. They've exposed deficits and weaknesses, but they've also highlighted our strengths and where we were doing well. Um, we've kept, we've chronicled obviously all of our, um, all of our hard work and we do refer back to it. Um, we go back actually and look for, and look through it. And, um, you know, like I said, to see, to build on the work that we've done. We don't want to start from scratch. We don't need to start from scratch. We know we're on the right track. We just need to focus our lens on the students with disabilities so that we can bring them along at the same rate that we're bringing all of the students along. The sustainable improvement plan. So what we used to call the turnaround plan is now called the sustainable improvement plan. The goals and these are the different dimensions and the different areas that we address, goals and benchmarks, stakeholder engagement, envisioning the future, assessments of assets and challenges, strategic objectives, district systems, and monitoring progress. And um, 2020 in this new sustainable improvement plan have brought about, there's two significant changes. We moved, like I said, away from the language of the turnaround plan to a sustainable improvement plan. Obviously, this is not something just to, we've started the work of turning around, now we need to sustain our, our efforts. And um, more, most importantly, the Baker School shifting our focus from all students to a more, um, a more uh, directed focus to our students with disabilities. This is just, I wanted to show you what the plan looks like when we, this is part of what we submitted to the state. I'm not going to go through this on the slides. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about it on the next couple of slides, but this is what the turnaround um, I'm sorry, the redesign plan looks like when we um, put together our root cause analysis, our problem statements and our high leverage goals for each of the turnaround practices. One um, thing that I did wanna point out, and I know I said before that part of this work can be difficult because it exposes where you're vulnerable and things that you believe that you're doing a very good job with um, you know, there, there may be parts of things that you think you're, you're doing really well and surveys from parents, staff, children expose things that, um, that are, that are clearly still a work in progress. And one thing for the Baker school is the data from the 2019 vocal survey. And that is something that the fourth and fifth graders complete at the end of the MCAS. And it talks about how they feel in school and their questions that are related to engagement, safety, and the environment. And in analyzing, analyzing our data, um, sadly, one thing that we found was that there was there were some extreme disparities between our students with disabilities and our students without disabilities in some of these categories. So that um, for us was a huge and will be a huge focus um, turnaround practice for. We have many, many, many things in place at the Baker School for uh, culture and climate and to be inclusive with our students and to motivate and um, we do morning message. We do a daily meeting now. Mr. Donovan puts on a, a morning announcements every morning. We have strong, um, a lot of done a lot of strong work and have a lot of systems built up to support the children as far as social emotionally. And so when we read this data, it was a little surprising to us, but this is about um, reflection and accepting what is, what is being said to us and moving on. As far as stakeholder engagement, um, I, I, would be remiss if I didn't give a huge uh, shout out to additional partners um, that we have. Kate Guerin, who is um, a, one of the special ed department heads, works with us um, on a regular basis and she is an invaluable partner, as well as Cassell Walker from DESE, who um, again, helps us and works with us and guides us through this entire process. 
The redesign team includes educators from various grade levels, representation from all programs, subgroups, and district and state partners. Um, one thing that we did a little bit differently in this plan as opposed to plans of the past is we have included a wider variety of stakeholders to ensure that every aspect and area of the school is represented. By involving key members of the Baker community on the redesign team, the lens of each of the stakeholders will be threaded throughout the plan. This allows for a more cohesive plan and shares the responsibility and accountability of implementing the plan. Each brings expertise to assist in fine tuning our plan while informing us of available district level and state options for support. And that's a, having Kate and Cassell on our team, they are able to help us with this and um, oftentimes give us information and let us know of supports that we might not have otherwise known about. Um, together we work to ensure that our plan aligns, aligns to the vision of the district strategic plan. Assessment of assets and challenges and root cause analysis. So in order to compare the outcomes of our students with disabilities with their similar age group peers in both academics and the social emotional area, we reviewed multiple sources of data, including STAR data, MCAS data, and surveys given to students. This assessment data drive, this assessment data dive led to following to the following three root causes as to why our students with disabilities are not making sufficient projects. And these are very broad statements and um, I'm not gonna go into everything that's involved with each one of them, but um, each one of these statements has um, a substantial amount of, of um, work behind it. So the first one is lack of shared responsibility for students with disabilities. So while a quarter of our school is made up of students with disabilities, we um, are seeing that, it, that it's still not a shared responsibility for all members of the school. Scheduling and system conflicts resulting in discrepancies in professional development. So accessibility to all staff. And um, basically what's that, what that means is, Having a such a large um, and diverse population in the school, it makes it difficult to schedule professional development so that all stakeholders can attend. So for example, one of the, um, Mrs. Marchesio teaches um, in the ASD classroom, she has grades three, four, and five. So in a perfect world, she would attend all meetings with grades three, grade three teachers, grade four teachers, and grade five teachers. But as you might imagine, that would pull her from her class a lot of the time. So, um, or if it was a, an occupational therapist or a moderate special needs teacher who work with multiple grade levels, having them be able to be involved in all of the work that we're doing becomes difficult, but we are working on a system so that um, they don't miss any of the, any of the, the um, professional development. And the third, um, kind of big umbrella is inconsistent differentiation for students with disabilities on the delivery of content standards. And um, this goes back to a little bit about what I just said as far as um, allowing all stakeholders to come to the table. So for example, if we're having a profession, um, um, a PLT meeting and we are doing a, um, we are maybe uh, writing lesson plans together, if we're not able to have representation from all teachers at the grade level, including those that teach the students with disabilities, we're missing vital partners and the partners are then missing vital information from the rest of the team. So um, we are working on ways to make sure that that um, that is not inconsistent in the future, that we're able to the general education um, is able to share with the um, with the other teachers. The first root cause when addressed will improve the social emotional well-being of the students with disabilities and create an inclusive setting for all community members. And as I said before, um, that's a, a huge priority for us based on our vocal data. And the second um, two root causes when addressed will improve academic outcomes for students with disabilities and for all students.
strategic objectives and initiatives. And this is where our work is. Uh, all staff will engage in professional development work toward an inclusive environment and ensure interventions are meeting the needs of all students. But again, specifically students with disabilities will provide professional development opportunities for staff members to engage in high expectations teaching and to promote uh, a culture of professionalism and shared accountability. Teams will coach the staff on growth mindset as supported by the high expectations teaching. We'll engage in, we will engage all stakeholders in the process of ensuring that students with disabilities have access to high quality resources, are fully included in all aspects of the Baker School, and we share responsibility for the academic and social emotional success of our students. We'll provide structures, schedules, and activities to ensure inclusive opportunities for all students. Students with disabilities will build strong supportive relationships throughout the Baker community, not just within their, their own smaller communities and their classrooms, but within the entire community. And students, all students with disabilities at the Baker School will receive the curriculum resources and services necessary to access appropriate features of the gen ed curriculum in the least restrict restrictive environment possible. We will consistently engage in higher order, rigorous standard-based instruction. We will consistently review individual goals, progress monitor and adjust instruction based on data and address social emotional needs in conjunction with the academics. And then ultimately, the long-term vision of the Mary E. Baker School is to be an inclusive school where all students are able to reach their full potential, both academically and social emotionally, and feel they are valued members of the Bobcat community. By reviewing the past, we will envision the future. Recognizing prior obstacles and challenges will allow us to identify initiatives needed for improvement, specifically in the area of the students with disabilities. Our plan is to continue to move the Baker forward and improving outcomes for all students for future years to come. The dream is for all staff members to be relentless in educating all, Bob, all Bobcats for many years to come. I don't wanna forget my last picture because I, um, I had Mr. Donovan dress up today and go out front so I could take some pictures of him in front of the Mary E. Baker sign. Um, and he, being the team player that he is, put the Bobby the Bobcat suit on and went right out front. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Mr. Donovan. But um, I think, let me just stop sharing. In summary, what I'd like you to know about the Baker School is that we are a proud, proud staff. We have done a lot of great work. Uh, we've made a lot of progress, but we've still got a ways to go. We know that, but I, uh, I believe we are on the, I know we are on the right track. We have the right um, systems in order and um, we look forward to continuing to move forward and, and to see our numbers go up. Thank you. Great. Thank you for, for coming tonight and, and your team being here with you and uh, for preparing um, you know, this material for us. Um, and, and of course, as, as we relate all the turnaround schools, we appreciate the, the hard work that's going into this and, and um, you know, especially uh, where the, the focus of your work right now is a little bit different um, than, than some of the other you know, uh, turnaround plans we've seen. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I suspect that gives you some newer, unique challenges um, to, to work on. Um, I had a few things, but I'm gonna go and, and, and let the rest of the committee kind of uh, chime in and ask some okay. questions and then I'll, I'll finish. Um, all right, so I didn't see who put their hand up first. So uh, Mr. Sullivan, why don't you give it, get us started? Thank you, Mr. Pro. I just wanted to thank you and your staff for the great job of bringing the percentile up from 2012 to the present time. And uh, that's really substantial what you've done. And it seems to me that you and your team are meeting all your goals. And thank you and a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Mrs. Sullivan. <laughs> Hello, thank you um, to the Baker <laughs> School and to Mrs. Brower and her team. Um, I just want a couple of comments. 
Um, the Baker School is one of the Ward 5 schools. I just wanted to point out their PTA there is amazing. Um, their PTA uh, supports the teachers and the students in any way they can and afford. Um, their president, Kat, we had her into the school committee a couple of years ago, is a Baron Selly award winner like me. <laughs> I just wanted to point out also the, um, the great job with the high expectations teaching and they're doing a great, good job on the social emotional, the strong relationships with the students and the teachers and for disabilities, kids with disabilities will be the focus going forward. Thank you. To Mrs. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. Team. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. And uh, finally, Mr. Minicello, the floor is yours. Hi, Mrs. Brower, how are you? Hello, how are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Good to see you. Um, it's so funny, uh, we are blessed over at the Hancock to have your daughter. So that's a good thing. We have another mm -hmm. Brower back in the building. So that's great. As, as you said, you were over at the Hancock and, and very effective there. And we, of course, miss you, but, um, but we, have a, <laughs> we, have a, we have a great piece of you still there. So that's good. Um, the I best I no could do. <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> great presentation. Very, very thorough. Um, you know, you have a very special population over at your school and we're, mm -hmm. we're very well aware of it. And um, um, I, I have all the confidence in the world with you. I mean, you, you are just uh, you know, full of energy and um, I, I know you, you're up for the task. So whatever you need, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, assessment, um, what tools, you know, let us know, um, you know, tailoring whatever it is you think needs to be tailored to that, that population. And, and we will have to worry about, you know, how to get it to you, but we need to know what to get to you, you know, and, and I know that you have all sorts of partners and uh, collaborating in this thing. So that's, a, that's a very good thing. But um, if there's something um, that we can assist with, um, that's our job. And we're, we're, we're certainly always willing to help you. Um, and um, great to see you and, and stay healthy. Thank you. Uh, I, I appreciate that. We, um, first of all, it's a privilege to have such a unique school. And we all, we, we truly all agree with that. And we all believe that we love our school and we love the population. Um, and the, our partners, whether it's our, you know, the, the team at Central, um, but I need to shout out as well to the, the special education department. They're extremely supportive um, of all of the programs in the school. And, um, you know, it's nice to have that many, that many partners in the district because we have every department head working, every special ed department head working in our building at, at, to some capacity. So um, there's always somebody there to answer a question or to run something by. So it's, it's really a, a strong team. Excellent. Excellent. Well, again, good, great to see you. Good to see you too. <laughs> uh, any other members of the uh, committee want to comment or have any questions? Okay. Um, and in the name of time, because we were a bit over here, um, I just wanted to uh, um, ask, I know on one of your PowerPoints, you had separated out English language learners and then uh, first language, not English. Yes. Can you help me understand the difference in those two groups? I mean, I understand, you know, not English speaking, but I, I, English language learners. I guess I, I, I had maybe the misconception that they were one and the same, but. Michelle, I'm going to defer to you. <laughs> I'm not, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but the, so the difference between English language learners and first language, not English. I'm going to say that English language learners are in a program like an SEI or an SEI program or an ISEI program as opposed to first language not English who are not in a program. Okay. Michelle, would yeah. you? Yes, and I would say even the English English learners, those students are probably in SEI. They're here and they're starting to uh, learn English as their as a, another language. And then the one, I'm sorry, what was the term? English language learners as opposed to first language, not English. Yes, first language, not English. You may not, you might get ESL services, but you're not in an SEI program. Okay, 
Okay. So they, they may be fluent in English, but they're, I mean, I'm sorry, they may not be fluent in English, but they grew up with English. It might be a second language or a third language with them, but they're not learning the language. They already know the language. They just may, may need some supports. Thank you, Michelle, for your backup. You're welcome. <laughs> Agree. All right. Thank you very much. That's actually really helpful. Um, and uh, I was glad you said that you had uh, expanded the number of stakeholders and types of stakeholders that you reached out to. And that that was also wonderful. So I'm, I'm glad to see that and, um, you know, congratulate the, the, the results that you had um, with uh, the students other than special ed. And I, I'm glad that you're, you know, recognizing that there's a need here and, and, and working on that. Um, so uh, great. Other than that, uh, again, you know, uh, as much as, as we have the resources to support the work you're doing, please, uh, you know, make sure to, uh, you know, let the committee know what, how we can support uh, the Baker and, and, and the work you're doing there and let the team know we, we appreciate all their efforts. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for the presentation. Great job. We appreciate you being here tonight. You're welcome. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for the hard work as well. All right, is there any other business to come before the curriculum subcommittee? All right, nothing from me. What's that? Nothing from me, Mr. DeAugustino. All right, thank you. Uh, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, I have a second. motion to adjourn, properly seconded. I'm gonna call the roll. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. D'Agostino is a yes. Uh, Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minichello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right, curriculum is adjourned. Um, maybe we'll take like a quick two minute and get right back for our, uh, our uh, Jesus, finance subcommittee. Thank you. <laughs>